After almost five years of reviewing laptops on this channel, today, for the first time ever, I'm doing a dedicated review of a Samsung laptop, the Galaxy Book 4 Pro 14. Originally, I intended to do a video on all the new Samsung laptops, which I did order by the way, but after weeks, this was the only one that arrived. So let's delve in and see how well it stacks up versus its competitors and whether it's worth buying. Just joking, you're watching one of our videos and we value your time. So I'm just going to tell you the conclusion right now. This laptop brutally tries to copy the MacBook Air and fails on many fronts, the biggest of which is performance. It tries to shove a hot Intel processor into a tiny chassis. This results in it massively underperforming the Air and every other laptop we've tested with this same Intel processor. In fact, priced around the same as the Air with the same configuration, there really isn't any reason to buy this laptop over that one. That being said, if you are insistent on buying a premium Windows laptop for light use, yes, this one is a viable buy. So here's our full review. The Galaxy Book 4 looks very sleek and minimal. It's fairly lightweight, around the same as the MacBook Air 13, but it's not as light as the new ThinkPad X1 Carbon or MSI's Prestige 13. So definitely portable, but not the lightest out there. Just like a MacBook, this laptop's chassis is solidly built. There is no screen flex and minimal keyboard deck flex. The monsoon gray color is fingerprint resistant. Moonstone gray. It's supposed to be moonstone gray, Josh. We've been over this. If you are using the touchscreen, you'll be pleased to know that the hinge is tight enough that the screen doesn't fall back while you press on it. The Galaxy Book 4's keyboard feels similar to a MacBook Air in that it feels precise, high quality, but a little low travel. By the way, sorry to keep making comparisons to the MacBook Air, but it's clearly what Samsung are trying to go for here. Anyway, the keyboard backlight is bright and illuminates all secondary functions well. You can see all keys clearly when the backlight is on. That is because the dark colored keys contrast well with the light colored backlight. This laptop comes with a fingerprint reader in the power button in the top right corner for easy access, but it pushes the delete key to the left from where it normally is. We prefer where MSI places their fingerprint reader on their Prestige 13. In that case, it's to the left of the delete key, so it doesn't change where the delete key normally is. The mechanical trackpad is smooth, accurate, and has good palm rejection, but the click is quite loud. This display is stunning. It is a 14 inch 2880 by 1800 AMOLED panel. According to Samsung, an AMOLED display is an advanced version of OLED that is thinner, lighter, and more flexible. The display has a variable refresh rate of either 60 or 120 Hertz. It is also very color accurate with a wide color gamut. The display gets bright enough at over 400 nits and surprisingly has rounded corners. Other than that, there was no noticeable screen door effect, which is nice as this is a common issue in many modern laptops with OLED panels. Lastly, PWM flickering is unfortunately present at all brightness levels. Again, another common issue with OLED panels. The touchscreen responds well to scrolling or clicking with your finger. However, it does not offer pen support. You want to go with the 360 version of this laptop if that's what you're looking for. In terms of port selection, on the left, the Galaxy Book 4 has two USB-C Thunderbolt 4 ports that both support charging. It also has an HDMI 2.1 port that supports 8K at 60Hz or 4 to 5K at 120Hz. On the right side, you've got a microSD card reader, a USB-A 10 gigabit port, and a headphone mic combo jack. The speakers get loud enough and there is decent bass for a laptop this size, but as a whole, the speakers just sound lifeless and flat. I tried turning Dolby Atmos on, thinking that would make the sound better, but it made it significantly worse. Overall, this laptop's speakers are just not as good as a MacBook Airs or other premium 14-inch laptops. The Tanity webcam is pretty great, no real complaints, other than you can kind of see my receding hairline here. There is also no physical privacy shutter. So if you're one of those folks who runs to the bathroom with their laptop while on a Zoom call, be careful. When it comes to performance, we're actually going to start with light use, which is probably what most people are going to do on this laptop, browsing the web, writing Word documents, or that sort of thing. In this case, this laptop is snappy enough. However, it always felt a little warm, which I found annoying, and the fans were always going. They aren't overly loud, but in a silent room you can sometimes hear them. Now, for another perspective, Gabby used this laptop for a full day to write a script on. She found the warmth manageable, and the laptop was quiet enough for her. So whether you're okay with it will depend how sensitive you are. But 
When it comes to high performance use, this laptop is really bad. We set the laptop to its highest performance mode and ran Geekbench, which tests a variety of common performance tasks. The Galaxy Book falls behind all of its competitors. This includes the MSI Prestige 13 and the MacBook Air 13 with M3, which are both smaller and or lighter. But things get significantly worse when the processor is maxed out during Cinebench 2024. It now massively underperforms all its competitors, and in this test that includes the MacBook Air M2 from two years ago. And by the way, if you're wondering why we haven't been comparing this laptop to the MacBook Pro 14, it's because that laptop costs a lot more than this one, and honestly, it completely annihilates it. What's really odd though is that the Galaxy Book actually draws a decent amount of power, more than the Prestige 13 which has the same processor, and significantly more than the MacBook Air. This surprised us as normally you would expect a laptop with this kind of power draw to perform better. So we ran the test again, and again, very similar result. In fact, when we ran Cinebench on a loop for 10 minutes, a torture test, this laptop actually performed better than on a single run. This sometimes happens with laptops that are extremely thermally constrained. Heat development and the way manufacturers lower the processor's wattage to cope with this, it just plays a massive role in how a laptop performs. Talking about the temperatures, during these benchmarks, this laptop's keyboard deck felt hotter than almost every other laptop, and its underside was ridiculously hot. Its fan noise was also loud. So, we've established that this laptop is just not for any high performance tasks, so let's switch over to graphics and talk about that. It's a similar story unfortunately. In TimeSpy, the Galaxy Book just really struggles to perform well against other laptops that have the same integrated GPU. In fact, it performs so badly that it is now a complete step down, and is on par with AMD's Radeon 780M integrated graphics. I played a couple of rounds of League of Legends on the laptop on both its default, optimized, and high performance modes. The laptop got warm and there was some fan noise, but honestly it wasn't too bad. The heat was mainly away from the WSAD keys. That being said, when alt tapping back into Windows, the laptop was clearly lagging, and that was on both modes. Let's now talk about battery life. You will be able to get the full performance out of the laptop when on battery, but as I showed you, that isn't saying much. To test battery life, we ran Cinebench on a loop for 30 minutes. This laptop actually performed surprisingly well, 68% battery remaining. This is especially good given its smaller 63 watt hour battery. That being said, it performed worse than Apple's MacBook Air, which has an even smaller battery. This is a result of Apple's incredibly efficient M series processor. To test a more realistic use case, we played a Netflix movie on repeat over Wi-Fi for 4 hours. The Galaxy Book again performed well, with 69% battery remaining, indicating around 12 hours of runtime for this test. But once again, it was beaten by the MacBook Air with its smaller battery. If you are looking to upgrade this laptop, think twice. The memory is soldered and it maxes out at 16GB for this 14-inch version. The 16-inch can be configured with up to 32. While you can upgrade the storage, it's going to be rough to get the back off the laptop. All the screws are hidden underneath the rubber feet, so you'll have to remove those too. Finally, these Samsung laptops come with an array of completely useless Samsung apps that are duplicative of much better ones from Microsoft, Google, and Apple. The promise is that Samsung offers an ecosystem of apps that rivals Apple's. It doesn't even come close, and YouTubers who tell you it does are just lying to you. Where my MacBook auto-detected nearby Apple devices and connected to them seamlessly, my Galaxy Book just didn't. After connecting my Samsung S23 Plus phone to the same Wi-Fi as this laptop, and even connecting to the laptop directly via Bluetooth, Samsung's QuickShare, their equivalent of AirDrop, just still didn't work. After 15 minutes of troubleshooting, I just gave up. Why Samsung insists on creating these apps that no one asked for is beyond me. Seriously, look at this settings app that they created. Why do we need to duplicate the screen that Windows already has to allow you to select a Wi-Fi network? Samsung should be saving money in the development of these apps and instead just charging you less for this laptop. And this leads me to pricing. At the time of this video, you can buy this 14-inch Galaxy Book 4 Pro with 16GB of memory and 512GB of storage for an MSRP of $1450. For $50 more, you would get a MacBook Air with M3 and the same specs. So with that said, I think you can guess my conclusion. The Samsung Galaxy Book 4 is a laptop that has been designed to be sold rather than to be used. Samsung has clearly focused on the things that an in-store shopper will definitely notice. A stunning display, a compact, high-quality chassis, and inclusion of all the latest components, 
But when it comes to using this laptop, its performance and functionality just falls short. For the same price, the MacBook Air with M3 is just much better and is the laptop that you should buy. Its performance slaughters this laptop. It lasts longer on battery. It doesn't have fan noise. Its speakers are better. Its trackpad is better. Its ecosystem is better. There really isn't anything that this laptop has over that one, other than a touchscreen. Now, if you are insistent on buying a Windows laptop, yes, this one will get the job done. That's for light tasks. However, Gabby prefers the MSI Prestige 13 over this one for that specific use case. And I prefer the HP Spectre 14. You see, the Prestige 13 is much lighter and has a much more comfortable keyboard. The Spectre 14 is far more powerful, can be configured with 32 gig of memory, and it has the most comfortable keyboard of any 14 inch laptop. Plus it also has two in one functionality. If you're looking for all the laptops that we recommend for various types of buyers and where to go to get the best deals on them, check out our new website. It makes finding the perfect laptop easy. At the end of the day, this Galaxy Book is really a me too product that just shouldn't exist. It endeavors to copy Apple's MacBook Air, but Samsung completely misunderstands what makes those devices so magical. Apple's ecosystem and their M series of processors, the development of which involved Apple taking risks and innovating, something Samsung hasn't done here. Perhaps if and when this laptop is updated with one of Qualcomm's new Snapdragon X Elite processors, things will be different. But for now, that's all I got for you. If you like this video, smash the like button, get subscribed and tell your friends about the channel. It definitely helps us grow and that means that we can make more videos for you. Plus, as I always say, it makes my dearest mother very proud. Till next time, go do something awesome with your day and I will catch you later.